Greetings folks, Stove the Hobo here on December 6th in Denver. And for this week's episode, we're trying to go east out of Denver to Kansas and then double back and get to El Paso, Texas. So right now I am at the intersection of Brighton and 31st. And I'm just barely off the property. But right here, what we've got is a apparent Denver to Kansas general manifest train. So as you can see with this area, I mean, you, you've got right in here to the departure track and the rest is fenced off. And then you've got, you know, cars and people. And fortunately, I can just say it's a Saturday. So this guy is closed and there's not any activity here because it's kind of plain sight what's going on here. The fortunate thing is where I'm standing, there's really no problem right here, just five feet off the property. So this is one of the rides I'm looking at. I mean, it's, it's gonna be kind of risky to just run and jump on in daylight. It's going on half an hour later, just kind of hunkered behind this little electrical box. Seems fairly low key. I don't think there's anyone really onto what's going on, which is fortunate. The new pot laws in Denver, I uh, mean, people are hopefully more relaxed and chill about this kind of thing than they used to be. I have met the bull right at this spot, the Union Pacific Bull. So if he drives up, that might be an issue. However, I'm not trespassing, so there's nothing grave to worry about, except if the bull drives through and sees me, he's gonna be on the lookout after this, because it's pretty apparent to a bull what's going on here, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully this train will leave soon. I'm, it's, I'm in this to win this now. As you can see, this is a perfect ride in the element of being able to see if the cops are coming. Look at these, I mean, this is head level right here. Well, it's about an hour and 20 minutes later <clears throat> with no sign of the train moving. So I'm hoping this train is leaving today. <clears throat> it's a Saturday, which can be different than the weekdays for when these trains leave. So uh, I was hoping not to have to pop the alcohol before leaving, but it's probably going to occur. All right, pulling out. Two in the afternoon. Here, 
dust has just been flowing everywhere all over the place definitely not a ride i would recommend if you can find something else so anyway i'm not positive if this train is going to dead end here and continue to kc so i'm going to sit tight for a bit and see if we move and if i hear them start taking the train apart obviously i'll get off and try to figure something else out not much going on at this old factory the train is dead ending here in Salina and figures it would have been nice to go to KC and I can't see any purpose stopping in this town for any reason so naturally Union Pacific has some kind of operation here where the trains are made and, and broken up here rather than just going through to KC so I'll be marooned here guaranteed longer than I wish here in Salina Kansas check out the town see what's going on so this is Salina Kansas which is pretty much just out here in the plains I definitely didn't have any, any intention of stopping here but this is where the train broke up so that's kind of what the deal is unfortunately with traveling on cargo trains is they don't always stop in the coolest places and it's not like I really had a option of getting off here it's totally deserted there's definitely zero hot chicks here or you know hot guys if you're a chick there's not even a store there's not even a liquor store I don't know what to tell you I just really hope another train shows up soon I guess there's still enough geezers in town living here to go see this concert but uh, that's pretty much about it for culture these days during the holiday season. Well folks, looks like I'm probably gonna be marooned here in Salina for quite a long time. The train has broken up. There's absolutely nothing moving through here. And hitchhike. Well, as you can see, I am completely filthy from that nasty gondola. So this is just one of the things you got to deal with uh, on trains. If you're going to ride on a line with minimal traffic, you've got to be prepared to be marooned. So I'm just going to go sit somewhere and try to figure out what to do. Hitchhiking is not out of, you know, totally out of possibility, but I would mean having to at least clean this dirty face off so for now I'm just gonna enjoy this cold beer on this miserable day in this miserable town out. This has been a complete bust. Uh, just waking up here the following morning. Uh, evidently since the the last time I've been kind of paying attention to this line there's been a total drop-off in coal traffic due to some mine closures and like you know the price dropping or whatever of coal to where they couldn't afford to send it on this line anymore. There's been nothing at all. There's been no activity in almost 24 hours here. And uh, I guess the other train I was expecting to get the rest of the way would have been a coal, which is, just doesn't happen anymore. So you find that out this way occasionally. So the next step will be to hike to the interstate and hitchhike on I-70. Institutions like this in Salina work hard to prevent kids from turning into people like me and doing things like I'm doing right now. I don't know where the hell the kids are. They should be up doing push-ups outside in t-shirts right now. Some military school this is. It's about three and uh, just due to the lack of rides, I'm looking at just going to Harrington and getting the, the Union Pacific main line to El Paso from there. That's only 26 miles. I'm here in Junction City, another totally pointless town if you ask me. It's just bleak. It's not that cold, fortunately, in Kansas, but I gotta just say, I mean, I left Denver two plus days ago and I'm just, I'm about fried with all this. This place is not interesting. It's not fun. I really just wanna get out of here and at least get on a, a line where the trains run, you know? This is horrible, waiting hours and hours for a ride to go 26 miles. It's just, it's driving me bonkers, folks. I wouldn't recommend 
ever doing this. Hopefully me doing this and you seeing it will prevent you from doing the same thing. Uh, it's one, uh, one ride closer here. It's out here in pretty remote area, but it's nine miles to Harrington. Walking distance, I guess, nine miles to go to a what I believe is a far busier main line with a lot of intermodal trains going towards El Paso. Interesting wildlife specimen here on the side of the road. It's a big ass turtle. Too bad it got smushed. Oh my god, I'm so sick of this! <sighs> Just rolled into Harrington, another deserted Kansas town like Salina. You can see again, very not much going on here in uh, Harrington, Kansas. I'd say this town's a little bit better than that. At least there's got a hill here, you know, topography. So anyway, at this point, it's kind of time to just get on a train and stay on for a while. It's possible I could be on board this next train to El Paso, Texas. Just probably about a 24 hour ride. So I'm gonna stock up here. Try to get some beer, something. Enough food for the trip. At the Heartlands Food and Liquor. Right down this hill to the train tracks. What's going on? Stove the Hobo here in Harrington, Kansas. And it's basically the same as Salina, this town. I mean, if you wanna See the town, actually, you should probably just come here on your own because I'm here at the train tracks reconning how to get out of here and actually start like really moving on this trip. So what it appears is that this train is making the, uh, it's going straight and therefore south, which is not the direction I'm trying to go. Uh, the important thing is they're going slow enough at this junction Junction's right here. You could bail if it was going the wrong way here, here in Harrington, Kansas. So the main concern here is going southwest. You've got this junction right at the border of the yard. And you see this track here curving off towards the right. I assume this is the track I want to Dalhart, Texas and El Paso. And then here, the train that just pieced out of here, I think that goes to Fort Worth looking at the maps of Union Pacific. So, definitely want to go here, not here. So this signal here, I believe, will be green for any train making the right turn. Uh, this is just a little south of the yard here. This is the yard office and all this nonsense. It's all Union Pacific. So the plan is to hike up a ways past this office and it shouldn't be an easy place to get on a stop train. Uh, hopefully it'll make the right if it goes the wrong way it's easy enough to bail off but we've also got this signal we can look at hopefully we can see that from back there and basically know for certain what direction the train is going December 9th been here a little longer than I thought there's been a lot of trains but um, they've been going mostly south I'm trying to get one that's going west so I've Basically gotten to the point where I've got to start making tracks and I'm gonna climb over these couple cuts of cars and get on one behind that I hope is going west. After almost 24 hours in this freaking yard, this train looks like it's leaving. I've heard, remember I only heard that all unit grain trains and unit covered hopper trains make the west turn at the end of the yard here so yeah it's kind of a gamble when you ride for free it's not as certain what's gonna happen you know some might say it's not totally worth it i ain't jumping off this thing if it's going any faster than this at the junction so hopefully it's gonna make a right turn because if it doesn't it's just gonna go the wrong way I've been drinking and not jumping off this train at all. 
pass it through the fuel pad here where they gas up all the cranes. Woo! It's going the right direction! Yeah! Yes! Peace out, bitches! So, uh, it's now in Pratt, Kansas, and the train, well, another stack just pulled up next to the train, the grain train I was on, and so I'm on the stack now, which is way higher priority than the grain train. Greetings from New Mexico. The train definitely made quite a bit of progress during the night. It was going high speed pretty much the entire time. So you can tell I've arrived in the southwest when you see this sinister fog rolling in here. Well, it's probably rolling out now that it's the morning. Yeah, the southwest is definitely a place with kind of a different vibe to it. You know, you've got Indian burial grounds, uh, evil spirits. There's a lot of things that could make it unnerving, I would say, to be out here. I mean, listen, it is deathly silent out here. I can't hear anything at all. Might as well be in outer space. Additionally, uh, you know, I just think at night, this has the vibe of a place where the train would just cruise into one of these fog banks and when it came out, whatever hobos were on board would have somehow disappeared off the train. No doubt victims to some kind of spiritual force that's definitely still in charge of this land. It's one of those areas where, you know, your cell phone doesn't work, GPS doesn't work. It's like one of those Bermuda Triangle dead zones, pretty much. So hopefully this stop is for a good reason you know, like letting another train pass and not just because of uh, some other kind of weird problem that can't be explained. And even though you got these cactuses right here, and look at that, yeah, these things, it's cold. There's ample frost on these railroad ties. One survival tip I'd like to point out here, uh, if you were out of water here, all these rocks, they've got frost all over them. And obviously that's not a lot of water, but if you did this frequently, you know, you would survive. You would get a cup of water maybe from here to here. That's my indication that it's time to get back on the train. Mexico for the crew change, right where the Burlington Northern Transcon crosses over this Union Pacific. Got a tanker train right here rolling through. Looks like it's ethanol, judging by the markings on the cars.
hobo out here in the desert, just about probably 90 miles north of El Paso, Texas. And I'm really glad that I'm not here in like, you know, August or July because it's gotta be 130, 140 degrees, possibly. So right now it's pleasant. Although I would say it's still really not habitable for human life. There's not any sign of water around here. Uh, looking around here, there's probably Gila monsters, extremely poisonous that will bite you. I guess we got a couple people who live around here, but they're probably crazy nutcases who do peyote, is my guess. This is Highway 54, New Mexico. You got this, let's see if we can see how this hawk here, definitely looking for some corpse with eyes they can just gouge out and feast on. Actually in Texas now, El Paso has got to be close. Well, the train has stopped pretty close to town. I'm just gonna get off here. I'd like to see what the town is about. So this is El Paso, Texas, on the 10th of December. Not a whole lot going on here in the downtown area. I'm still trying to find just a place to get some cheap food. Maybe some beer. Just pretty much expended all my alcohol supplies. I guess this is where you'd go if you get pulled off the train. Very interesting. Looks like something in Salt Lake. At the Mormon complex. Very elaborate job. In the main drag. Wednesday night about 8 p.m. Not much going on. Well, there's a little bit more going on nightlife-wise than there is in uh, Harrington. Where we were yesterday. I would still say it's fairly dull. Down here at the border, it kind of looks like BNSF has got a train that crosses the border. It's right here. This is the bridge. I think it's both the auto and the pedestrian bridge right over into Juarez. The other side, folks, right there. Otro lado de la frontera. Juarez. Sitting up here, and we got a train parked here going east and then the border fence and Juarez. Here's the pole right here. That little vehicle. I don't know what he's doing. I'm just it's good to know what his car looks like. The thing about the bull is he, he looks tough, but he just he really all he does is drive around and not do a whole lot. This is gonna do it for El Paso. I'm gonna check the town out and uh, get a bus out of here to LA. Institutions like this in Salina work hard to prevent kids from turning into people like me and doing things like I'm doing right now.